So you think lithium ion batteries are the future of EVs, right? Well, Toyota wants you to forget what you know as they've just made a breakthrough with an ancient battery technology. If you're excited for new Toyota batteries, cheaper hybrids, better hybrids as well, smash the like button, subscribe for more Toyota updates like this, and let's get into this new battery from Toyota. Over at the global Toyota page, Toyota is launching an all new Aqua. And this vehicle is the same thing as the Prius C that was canceled. I think it was canceled in 2017. I'll fact check myself in post. But the Prius C was canceled here in the United States along the same time the Prius V was also canceled. So we just have one Prius here in the United States, and that is the normal Prius. Uh, but the Aqua has just been rekindled with a new generation on a TNGAB platform. That's where the new Yaris and the Yaris Cross uh, share that same platform. And it has a new battery. I was not expecting this at all. We haven't seen this sort of battery on any mass produced vehicle ever, as far as I'm aware of. The all new Aqua is approximately 20% more fuel efficient than the previous generation and it combines uh, an outstanding fuel economy of 35.8 kilometers per liter. Um, that doesn't really transfer to EPA very well. So what I did is 20% is uh, in theory should transfer to the Prius C as well in the EPA. So the Prius C here in America uh, average MPG was 46 miles per gallon. You add 20% efficiency to it and we're seeing 55 miles per gallon com combined. That 20% alone is not the battery improvement. Don't worry, we'll get into the details of this battery in a little bit. But they've also replaced the engine with a one and a half liter dynamic force engine, which is at least 40% thermally efficient. Uh, so if we say the outgoing engine was 35% efficient uh, and this new engine is 5% more efficient at 40%. So 5% of the 20% is 2.3 miles per gallon. So we've got a small improvement in terms of efficiency just from the switch to a new uh, thermally efficient engine. But we also have 15% coming from the battery pack, which is roughly seven miles per gallon just coming from this new battery pack alone, which is still the nickel metal hydride battery, but it's re redesigned essentially from the ground up. And no, we're not going to get this Aqua here in the United States, so I'm not going to go over the details of this vehicle, even though well, we actually have a one pedal driving feature in the vehicle now, which we could be seeing in future uh, hybrids from Toyota. So that's really good to see. But it's all about this new bipolar nickel hydrogen battery or nickel metal hydride. Like this is the same battery that's been used in Toyota hybrids for a long time. Yes, they've been uh, slowly switching over to lithium ion because they're pretty much superior in every single way other than uh, extreme temperatures. We know nickel metal hydride is really, really good at very cold and very hot temperatures compared to lithium ion and they're cheaper. So that's a good thing too. Well, Toyota just found a way to make them even cheaper. So Toyota didn't ask like Panasonic for help with this battery, even though Panasonic and Toyota are working really, really hard with the prime plan and energy and solutions to make lithium ion batteries cheaper, which they will by 2022. At least that's what I reported on earlier this week. But Toyota worked with their own Toyota Industries Corporation. You gotta remember Toyota is not just Toyota Motor. They have tons of different uh, offshoots of their core company. And one of those companies is Toyota Industry Corporation which has been making their electrified forklift trust trucks for a long time. So if you guys saying, oh, you know, Toyota has been making EVs. Well, yes, hybrids are a part of that, but also they've been making electric forklifts for a long time through uh, Toyota Industries. And the two companies have worked to develop batteries so they can bring electrified vehicles to market and establish them as soon as possible. Their efforts have led to the development of a bipolar nickel hydrogen battery, which compared to previous generations batteries are both more compact and capable of generating higher outputs. And that was kind of the downfall of the nickel metal hydride in some ways. Uh, lithium ion is uh, has more power to it and is more energy dense. Uh, well, it looks like they've just been able to get a little bit closer to lithium ion on with this nickel metal hydride. And bipolar nickel hydrogen batteries, the cathode is applied to one side of the current collector and an anode to the other. Several of these structures, which are known as bipolar electrodes, are stacked together to form a battery. Compared to non-bipolar nickel hydrogen batteries, bipolar versions consist of fewer current collectors and other parts, enabling them to be more compact. It is possible to stack a larger number of cells in bipolar nickel hydrogen 
batteries than in bi non-bipolar nickel hydrogen batteries of the same size, so better energy density. In addition, bipolar batteries have a greater active surface area and a simpler construction. There's lower resistance within the battery itself. This enables a flow of larger currents, leading to increased output. Now, if you wanted to take like the RAV4 Prime and try to run it on nickel metal hydride batteries, it just wouldn't work. Well, it might work a little bit better now that they have increased power with this new bipolar technology. Now, this new bipolar nickel metal hydride battery equipped in the new Aqua has an output approximately two times higher than the non-polar or the non-bipolar nickel hydrogen battery equipped in the previous generation Aqua. So I love their uh, little diagrams here showing it to us uh, commoners out there so we can understand a little bit better. Definitely more compact and the bigger arrow means larger current <laughs> and uh, more power output coming from a smaller battery. This increased output delivers improved acceleration responsiveness and a smooth, powerful acceleration from low speeds. So it should drive and feel very similar to the hybrids with a lithium ion battery. And the speed range at which the all new Aqua, Aqua can operate on battery power has been expanded, allowing the vehicle to run on electricity alone without engaging the engine in a wide variety of urban scenarios. There's actually been a lot of research done on this sort of battery technology and actually in Priuses before. Uh, so we're heading over to researchgate.net where they can provide for us some additional information on this sort of battery technology. Now this is old. This is com coming from 2007. Now these are all prototypes, but it laid the groundwork of what's capable of what Toyota just did here, what, 14 years later? Gosh, it's been 14 years since I graduated high school. Yikes. <laughs> this bipolar nickel metal hydride battery has 30% less volume and a projected cost that is 25% less than the OEM Prius batteries. So you're telling me we now have a smaller battery and it costs less. Uh, this is something that I didn't expect. I thought nickel metal hydride was already there and made it perfected in the, the hybrid vehicles that we currently see in Toyota. Well, now they're going to be cheaper. They're going to take up less space. They're going to be lighter and they're going to provide a better driving experience and give you better fuel economy. So if we're to, we're to take this sort of uh, fuel efficiency improvement and put it into something like the Sienna minivan that already gets 36 miles per gallon, five miles per gallon improvement getting around 41, 42 miles per gallon in the Sienna just by changing this battery from a certain type of nickel metal hydride to a cheaper one that's better in every single way. Now there are some disadvantages to this sort of battery is that there's electrolyte leakage and you're dealing with cell gas pressure. Well, these issues probably have led to this long development of this sort of battery. It's been 14 years since this article was written up, but they've finally figured out to make it reliable. Toyota's not gonna make an unreliable battery pack. Uh, so we have efficient packing, we have a reduction of collector losses and simplified cell interconnection leading to higher power output and better energy density and smaller packages. So how will this affect Toyota's hybrids going forward? Well, like I gave you that Sienna example, there are still a few vehicles out there in the Toyota lineup that are using nickel metal hydride for their hybrids. I mentioned the Sienna hybrid. Uh, we also have uh, the, the Highlander hybrid uses uh, nickel metal hydride as well. I think the Prius all wheel drive uses nickel metal hydride. But what this tells me is that Toyota can essentially use nickel metal hydride and all of their normal hybrids going forward with this sort of battery because it provides lithium ion like efficiencies might not have quite the power density but it's going to be cheaper so your hybrids are going to get cheaper more fuel efficient and that means the lithium ion batteries that is definitely going to be in shortage for a while until we find something better more uh more widely available other than lithium but lithium really is the only thing we have right now with with really high power and energy density so they're going to be able to allocate lithium ion batteries more towards full evs and plug-in hybrids and use nickel metal hydride to put in their hybrids so lithium ion can be used elsewhere. So traditionally, even though nickel metal hydride weighs 25% more than lithium ion battery packs and takes up 20% more volume, that has just been negated. And now we'll have nickel metal hydride battery packs that are roughly the same size as lithium ion and provide almost the same fuel economy benefits. And they're going to be 
way, way, way cheaper. Really good news for the average consumer out there who doesn't want to spend 40K plus on a fully electric vehicle. Guys, we have one last article today. And Toyota cancels Toyota Olympics TV ads. Akio, the CEO, won't attend opening ceremony. So there's huge backlash going on in Japan right now for the Olympics. And the reason is, is that COVID is uh, hitting them like way later than everyone else. I mean, I guess that can happen if you're an island and you shut down your borders. Like, so the COVID is taking is hitting them like over a year later than where it hit everyone else. And it's hitting them hard, especially during this time of the Olympics, right when the Olympics are supposed to be going on, which is ironic because last year uh, they were canceled because of COVID. Well, COVID is affecting them worse this year. It's just the irony. So uh, Toyota, even though they were like the major sponsor and probably spent billions and billions of dollars making vehicles and announcements for the Tokyo Games, I, it looks like it's just a complete mess right now. I'm not going to read the article, but yes, guys, <laughs> we will be seeing Toyota uh, commercials here in the United States. This is just for Japan, uh, that they won't be showing ads in Japan during the Olympics here in the United States, they will probably just apportion that advertising dollars and throw it to United States and Canada, other parts of the world where they are the major sponsor TV ad sponsor still. Uh, so just very interesting. But guys, I'll end it there. Cheaper hybrids for the masses, better hybrids for the masses and exciting times for Toyota as they continue to surprise us when it comes to electric vehicles. A lot of people out there counting them out saying they're going to be the next Nokia or Blackberry or Kodak that, you know, fell because they didn't innovate quick enough. Toyota has too much money. They're like too big to fail, you know, almost. <laughs> so guys, I'll end it there. Exciting times. Smash the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe for more Toyota news. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.